Strolling in the park, watching winter turn to spring. Walking in the dark, seeing lovers do their thing. Hey everyone, this is Dan from the Rochester Indie Musician Spotlight and Three Heads Brewing. Today I'm sitting down with Avis Reese, the Rochester resident for February 2020. I cannot believe that those words just came out of my mouth, that it is 2020. It is crazy. Wow, 2019 was certainly interesting, but we all survived it together. She's putting on four awesome concerts in the month of February, all Thursday shows. Some of you know Avis as Daniel Ponder's musical director and a lot of other projects in the Rochester area, so we are very excited to welcome her for four shows on the Three Head stage. Avis, thanks for your time, girl. Appreciate Thank it. You. As we do, let's start off nice and easy. Okay. Are you a Rochester native? I am a Rochester native. Talk to me about growing up in Rochester, where you're from a musical family. What was your growing up experience like? <laughs> um, I guess my family is musical in some ways. Mm -hmm. My oldest sister, she's an organist and pianist as mm -hmm. well. And I think all of my siblings are musically motivated, even mm -hmm. though they might not <laughs> actually musically play. Musically motivated, I like right? that, yeah. They don't necessarily play instruments, but we all just have had an ear and a love for music, and I have a ton of cousins that play, mm -hmm. um, play and sing. So I, I think I was always surrounded by music in a lot of ways. Were you like, were you part of the family band, or was there like you guys got together and played you instruments, know, or so it wasn't quite that? Fun. So my... Uh, myself and my sisters, the two that are right above me, we used to always kind of like make up songs on the piano and, and sing together. And so we had our own little thing like at the house, mm -hmm. but not like... Not a would, thing thing. No, no. So it was just something fun that we did. And uh, for some reason, the piano just stuck for me. And so I decided to like keep it going. Cool. So. What, I mean, you mentioned like everyone is musically motivated. Was there a lot of music playing in your house? Do you remember like anything that really like captivated you and brought you in that you were listening to when you were younger? Yeah. Um, I'll say that like I grew up in a house that we pretty much only were allowed to listen to gospel music hmm. in the house. Um, and so like my parents would play whatever records they had, like records. Right, I'm records. Actually, actually records. Wow. Um, or cassette tapes at the time, like one or the two. Um, and so that was just kind of always playing in the house in 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 some form or fashion, mm -hmm. whether it was my parents or my siblings. Um, and so that was what kind of drew me. And then also playing in church right. and the music um, from the church, I was just kind of surrounded by it in that way. So one of the things I think is really cool, someone who uh, didn't go to a gospel church when they were younger, I have had the opportunity to, to go to some of these gospel services. And the musician, the, the musicality level, how great the musicians are and the energy there mm -hmm. is insane. Yes. It's incredible. Yeah. What is, what's that like as someone who's like starting off playing music in public at like 13 and it's like that? <laughs> It's intimidating, yeah. and it, I think it was, for me, intimidating on two levels because there also were not other women that I was seeing mm. in that space, and so it was easy for me to really feel very small in these spaces where, you know, I'm learning and I'm a little more timid, and, you know all these phenomenal musicians are just like doing all the things, all the tricks and getting all the responses. And I'm just like, you know, <laughs> playing my three little chords and hoping that they sound good. So it was very intimidating in, in on one hand, but on, on the other hand, it is, you know, um, something that motivated me to go home and try and learn the things that I was seeing them do. Like I would sit on, a piano bench or an organ bench and just watch the musician's hands like that's mm. really how I learned like I learned by ear I learned by watching mm. and so like I would try and remember okay when they it sounded like this because their hand position was like this or you know so it was a very observational thing for me and I don't know what type of musician I would be if I didn't have that experience so it's um it's yeah 
<laughs> cool. What? Well, who are some artists, like either piano players or singers or other musical directors? Is you know, it's, uh, now that you're a musical director, is, mm-hmm. there, is there anyone that really inspired you, or someone you kind of mo- you want to model yourself after? You know, that is a great question that I don't know if I have an answer That's to. That's okay. I I think I've picked up on a lot of. Um, like in terms of gospel, I think mm. my initial um, motivating artists were Thomas Whitfield, Andre Crouch, Richard Smallwood, Walter Hawkins, Edwin Hawkins. Like they all played um, and they wrote the songs for their choirs. And I just think their style was something that, like their approach to songwriting was just something that just always moved me. Mm. And and it really showed like there's space for the band, there's space for the singers, like for it to all come together where it's like not one outshining the other. And I think that's kind of been my approach with my current musical situations. It's just like finding space for every one and not like, I don't like to overplay the singer, you know, or I try not to underplay, even though sometimes I do under, <laughs> I do underplay. You know, so just just kind of thinking in those terms, like serve the song more than you serve yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so when did you start playing like out in the Rochester music scene that wasn't more of the, the church? church? Yeah. Um, in 2009 or 2009 or 2010, my friend Judah Seeley, mm-hmm. he started a band and I met him when I was in college at the U of R and he would play for the services there and so we connected there and he was like you know i really want to play in a band i've never done it and i was like i've never done it either <laughs> so we just connected and did that and then so we did that project for maybe about a year and then after that i just started getting connected to other folks in the community and then it turned into what it has turned into. <laughs> cool. When did uh, Danielle Ponder reach out to you and said that she offered you the MD role? Yeah. So it's funny. Like I met Danielle maybe in 2012, 2013. Mm-hmm. Corey, he um, introduced us. At the time, Danielle wasn't um, part of a band or anything. She was just kind of, people would call her and ask her to do shows. And so she had something that she was called on to play for and she needed a musician. And there were a couple other musicians that couldn't really do the material that she was looking for. And so then Corey called me, he was like, do you know this song by Stevie Wonder? And I'm like, yeah, I know this (laughs) song by Stevie Wonder. And so I went and played it for Danielle. She was like, yes, like I need, I need that. Mm. And so we did the show and then like, I'm thinking it was one and done. And then she gets another call, and I do another show with her. And then she gets another one. <laughs> and then she was like, I think I want to start a band. Would you be interested in doing that? And I'm like, sure, it'll be fun. And little did I know it would turn into what it has turned into. So <laughs> sounds like, It sounds like it's been quite a ride. It has been. It's been great. Like I, I love it. I love it. So, I mean, that, to talk just a little bit about this, because a, a lot of what you're doing is like the music for the three head shows are like, the musical director side of things, the side person. Talk to me about the collaborate, the collaborative experience between you and a songwriter where you're trying to figure out like how to write a song. Because if Danielle brings your song, you have to work with her mm-hmm. to figure out how the music best serves that. How to, take me inside that relationship a little bit. How does that work? You know, it's, it's really kind of um, challenging in, in a way because I think you have to really try and suppress your own musical voice in order Mm. to hear someone else's musical voice and sometimes like this was my first time really having that type of type of experience where we're actually creating like i've been able to you know listen to songs and do a cover show for you know however long but but actually saying you know having danielle bring this melody to me and saying what chords can go with this but I don't want it to sound like this. You know, I don't Mm -hmm. want it to sound gospel or whatever. And I'm just like, gotcha. Okay, take that (laughs) out. All right. So it was really, it took, it took practice for us to get to the point where like, now I know if she brings a melody to me, I know I can put this to it and it'll be in the wheelhouse that she's 
you know, going for. So um, it just takes time and it just takes you a uh, willingness to to really hear someone else's um, someone else's musical voice mm -hmm. over your own. Yeah. Um, Sounds like a very fine balancing act. It is. It <laughs> is. And, and there's and then I feel like once you build up that trust, then there is room for you to bring in your musical voice and your musical ideas because you're not self-serving from the, the beginning of the process. Exactly. Well, speaking of your own musical voice, according to my handy-dandy notebook here, you're putting together four awesome shows here. So like I said, they're all Thursday shows this month. So we're starting out on February 6th. We have the 90s House Party. 90s House Party. Tell us about this. So this one was actually the last theme that came to my mind. Mm. Um, and I decided to start the show off with it. Um... I I don't even know how it came, <laughs> how it came to be. I think I was stuck on what my last right. theme would be and I was just like I want it to be something fun, like something that you know it's just fun. Mm -hmm. And even though like I won't say that my musical style is necessarily shaped by 90s music, I think on some level like we're all kind of influenced by 90s music on some level. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, I just want it to be a fun, good time. Like, I know how much people love 90s music. And then also, like, when I was talking to some friends, I can ask three different friends, like, when you think of the word 90s house party, what songs come to mind? And they all gave me very different responses. And so I'm yeah. just like, there's so much music to pull from that. It's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be dope. Like regardless, <laughs> like it's hard to go wrong with '90s music. So, so yeah. Awesome. Who's playing with you in this project? For this week, I have Walter Chapman on guitar. Mm -hmm. I have E.J. Randall on drums. I have Louis Carrion on bass. Myself on keys. And then singers, I have Tashman Powell, mm -hmm. Chandria Brown, um, Therese Lott, and Tremaine Graham. Awesome. Yeah. We have another Decades-themed show following that. On the 13th, we have 70s Throwback. 70s Throwback. Talk to me about this one. I love 70s music. Like, love, <laughs> love 70s music. And so I was like, I, this has to be a thing. Like, mm -hmm. it has to. Um, and so I feel like a lot of music that I've been influenced by has come from that, that time. I think the songwriting was epic. I think, um, like band placements were, were epic mm -hmm. and it, it's just nothing like it. So I just really wanted to have a, have a night to kind of do some of my favorite songs, mm. um, songs that are fun but also like really like musically meaty too mm. um and i'm playing with some of my favorite musicians here in the city i have marv parker on bass um brother wilson on guitar mm. bruce pitts on drums i have quinn lawrence on trumpet mm -hmm. i have bakari on uh saxophone who, who is my cousin <laughs> bakari smith and on vocals i have Cinnamon Jones, mm -hmm. I have Rick Robinson, Therese Lott, and uh, Danielle's going to come for... Oh, very yeah, exciting. Well, Good. The, like, the awesome names just keep yeah, growing on yeah. all these. This is crazy. This one I am curious about. So the week following, so the, now this is like, mm -hmm. get another Thursday show. February 20th, you have the B-Sides. I can probably probably guess what it means, yes. but what what is this show and, and why did you want to do it? So this one was one of my, surprisingly, one of my first... Um, thoughts. It is the nine singles mm. of, you know, of some of my favorite artists. Um, I wanted to do this theme in particular because I do feel like a lot of the music, I, I found myself always learning random songs. Like, mm. I would, when I listened to Stevie Wonder, I wasn't initially learning Superstition or I Wish or whatever. Like, I was learning those deep cuts. Mm -hmm. Um, just because I just thought they were just so interesting. And like Stevie Wonder, for example, as I was like doing all my research for this show, he's released 98 singles. 
like 23, 24, however many albums, 98 singles. And it's like, we cover the same 12 songs over and over. I'm just like, why is that? Yeah. Like, you know, and that's just the singles. That's not even, you know, all of the other songs within these albums. And so I kind of wanted to do this night because it's just like, hey, we love these artists, but they have this whole musical library that we're not giving credit to. Yeah. And so, um, so I just wanted to kind of give credit because I think those were the songs that usually catch my attention hmm. even more than the singles. And so. who is playing on this show with you? On this show, I have... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have Deepak That's Who on, on guitar. I have uh, Carlton Wilcox Sr. on bass. Mm -hmm. And I have Carlton Wilcox Jr. on drums. Nice. And on vocals, I have Joy Little. Mm -hmm. And I have Charles Emanuel. Wow. Keep we the the we will we'll get to all this. So wrapping this all up, the final week that you have, February twenty seventh, you have tribute to gospel. And this kind, of, I, I want to ask this question first because uh -huh. as you're going through all of these names, these may, names may be familiar to some, they may be un, unfamiliar to others. Mm -hmm. But the difference is not a lot of these cats play at three heads. Yeah, it's kind of. What do you think about the fact that you're real? You're bringing in such a different crop of musicians in, onto the three-head stage. That was very intentional. Yeah. Um, because I, I do feel like there are pockets of the musical community that are very well aware of each other and very mm -hmm. well um, kind of integrated in a way or whatever. Yeah. And I think there's other pockets that it's just like people are not... I don't even know if they're not aware that mm -hmm. they exist or they just have no desire to search. <laughs> to, right. You know, we're used to the bands we're used to. We're used to the musicians that we're used to. And I have had the chance to play with some phenomenal musicians and just I've just become more and more aware that I am playing with them in these very isolated spaces. Mm. Um when they should be able to, you know, play regularly at a, a three heads or, you know, right. any, of, any of these venues. And I think it's just because sometimes people don't seek out mm. um, what's not already presented to them week after week. Um, so I just wanted to kind of bring, bring my crew, <laughs> bring my crew over here and, yeah. you know, because they're phenomenal musicians yeah. and, I just wanted to put on a different kind of show week after week um, that I think people are really going to enjoy, enjoy. Like, people love the, this music, and I know, you know, especially, like, on a week like the 70s week, like, those those guys are kind of the cream of the crop to play mm -hmm. that type of music, you know? And so to I want people to hear, like, Oh, okay. Like they, they, they like live and breathe this type of thing. Yeah. And so you know, for the gospel week, like getting people who live and breathe this type of music, I think it's important for people to see because it's easy for us to replicate things, but mm -hmm. you know, to see people who like this is like their thing, mm -hmm. like you know. Very cool. Who yeah. is playing on this tribute to gospel show? So I have uh, Paul Morgan on drums. Mm -hmm. I have. Um, Chubb Avery on bass. I have Brandon Hughes on organ, myself on keys, and Art Beatty on guitar. Mm -hmm. And I have Jay Monroe and his choir coming in. Oh boy, yeah. a, cro a, a choir, a nine voice choir. Woo! All right, yeah. Sounds good. I'm just like, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking as a sound engineer in that space, and I'm like, whoo. Our guys have got it. Yeah, Hakeem, we'll, we'll Zach, it. Jesse, Adrian, they got it. We'll I'm make not, it work. I'm worried about it, but I'm not worried about it for you guys. <laughs> We're totally okay. All right, guys, we got through all the weeks. Let's go through them right quick. Thursday, January 6th, we have the 90s house party. Following week on the 13th, 70s throwback on the 20th, the B-sides. And then on the 27th, Tribute to Gospel. And again, those are all Thursday shows. One more time, my name is Dan Gross, and this is Avis Reese the Rochester resident for February 2020, and we hope to see you every Thursday at Three Heads Brewing. Strolling in the park
Watching winter turn to spring Walking in the dark Seeing lovers do their thing That's the time I feel like making love to you That's the time I feel like making dreams come true Oh baby In the restaurant Holding hands by candlelight When you're touching me Wanting you with all my might That's the time I feel like making love to you That's the time I feel like making dreams come true Oh baby When you talk to me When you're moaning sweet and low When you're touching me And your feelings start to show That's the time I feel like making love to you That's the time I feel like making dreams come true Oh baby Thank you.